Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages with complete ads and up-to-date local listings to find just what you need. My universe is everything I imagine. I want to be a graphic designer. How can I get there? The Academy. It fits my busy lifestyle, and I can learn firsthand from instructors who've been there and know what it takes. Hey, my destiny is a career doing what I love my way. My choice, my school. The International Academy of Design and Technology. You imagine we can get you there. Call 1-800-932-2900. 1-800-932-2900. It's four o'clock, you wanna dial in? Yeah, you know, these calls would go a lot better if we had an office. This is our office. This is your daughter's dorm room, Bob. Listen, we, we have internet, telephone, dorm room. lounge, it's all free. We could just do business at FedEx office. They've got Wi-Fi, workstations. A lot of them are open 24-7. It'll still save us an overhead. Hey, baby. Mm. Here, give me sugar. You got a room. <laughs> Technically, this is her room. Mm. Hello, we're on. We understand you want less overhead. FedEx office. Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you every week, Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m., on Bright House Cable 49. We have a lot of action going on politically in Central Florida. Um, one of the major races is the mayor's race for the county. Orange County uh, will be electing a new mayor as uh, Richard Crowdy steps out. And tonight we have with us one of the candidates who is running for the mayor uh, position in Orange County. Um, her name is Vienna Avelares. She's a Hispanic woman, and she is uh, a worker. She works at UCF. What do you do at UCF? I'm an accountant, Danny. You're an accountant. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what this country needs right now is good accountants, <laughs> because you. we are in terrible shape. And um, introduce yourself to the audience. Well, good evening, Danny. First of all, thank you for having mm -hmm. me here. I'm very honored to be a Hispanic Achievers. I'm a big fan of the show, and I enjoy seeing it every week. Um, like you said, I'm Hispanic. Um, I was born in New York City, grew up in Puerto Rico, and came to Florida in 1982. And um, I've been working at UCF as an accountant for 12 years. And I've been participating in different uh, political arenas. I, pol politics mm -hmm. is my passion. And about two years ago, I decided that um, I wanted to do a study about local government. And that's when I started getting interested in the Orange County Mayor's Office. And the reason being, I know that there's a need for leadership. Most definitely, Orange County needs a change a positive change, a change of growth, a change that will also bring uh, development, jobs. So that's what I want to do. I want to run for Orange County Mayor, and um, that's who I am. <laughs> when I have I'll lead off with two questions. Number one, you are working in an academic environment. Correct. Um, a lot of times in an environment like Central Florida, uh, pressure can be applied through the political process to people like you that work at a place like UCF. Have you received any kind of pressure uh, not to run for office as a result of um, your announcement to run for Orange County Mayor? Not at all, not at all. Actually, um, the vice president knows that I'm running, the president knows that I'm running. UCF as a high education institution encourages not only their staff, but the faculty, the students, to be part of public office. Public office is a service. I see myself as a public servant, not a politician. And UCF has been very supportive. Of course, we have our certain policies that we have to follow. Um, because, for example, if I'm running for this office, I have to respect that as an employee of UCF, I cannot use UCF as a platform. And I respect that. And I'm not the only one who's done it in the past. There have been many professors in UCF who has also seek public mm -hmm. office, and they've done it successfully. 
uh, UCF encouraged it. Mm -hmm. So my coworkers, they know I'm running, but they know that I have told them you can't. We can't talk about this during eight to five. So it's very interesting because they've been very supportive. They send emails, little notes, Vienna. It's admirable what you're doing. We support you. So I think that I've been blessed and lucky to be at UCF. Um, UCF, it's very involved in the community. UCF participates in a lot of the community needs. So they, they told me that they feel that this is a good step, that mm -hmm. what I'm doing is very positive. Okay, are you running as a, uh, you on a Republican side or the Democratic side? Uh, this is a nonpartisan position and everybody on the ballot is running nonpartisan. It's a nonpartisan position. I have to laugh when somebody tells me that who's in politics. Nonpartisan <laughs> in politics? You know, you, you can't sell me that, you know? Every politician is associated with a party somehow or a political philosophy. Do you lean towards the Democratic philosophy or to the Republican philosophy? I will say that I'm a moderate conservative. Okay. I believe that we need, especially as a minority, I believe that we need to grow and we have a chance and we should have an opportunity. We should have mm -hmm. a chance and opportunity to build our lives based on bettering ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is one of the things that I'm an advocate is to promote among minorities to try to become uh, more towards not depending on government. Mm -hmm. However, I see that nowadays we don't want people depending on government, but we are trying in a certain way to make it difficult for people like myself mm -hmm. to get higher goals in life. So then people have no other option that to seek towards mm -hmm. government's help. And if that's the case, then we should have responsible government. We should have leaders that do care. Do you think we have responsible government now in general? No. Okay. Um, when you started out, you said Orange County government needs change. Mm -hmm. Why does it need change? And what kind of change does it need? Well, definitely uh, in my studies, and it's been for two years, mm -hmm. Orange County has completely based its focus on certain projects and it's no secret, everybody knows this. Okay. Arena, Magics, and uh, the Convention Center. And that's fine. However, we have a percentage of almost 12% unemployment in this county. Um, taxes are getting higher, and not only with houses, but you can look at what happened with the tolls. I mean, these people are playing with the citizens' future and then they expect the citizens to come, give them their support, vote for them, and once they get into office. But didn't, didn't um, the building of this new wonderful, supposedly wonderful, uh, entertainment arts center bring jobs? Not that I have, no, we haven't seen that at all, and that's well, why. Well, who's building it? I mean, how do how they build it without people working? These have, done, these have been done through private contracts. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what Orange County's government, and, and I'm going to just say it, Richard Crotty has been very good at, at providing uh, contracts that are private contracts. However, jobs, well, we, we Buddy see... Well, Buddy Dyer does the same thing. Because oh, definitely. The guys yes. who are building yes. that building, instead of using Florida contractors, come from Texas. Exactly. It's a Texas company yes. that's building the arena, the new arena mm -hmm. off of I-4, mm -hmm. and... As, as I did a little investigation, and a lot of employees that are working there in construction are imported from Tampa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? So um, I think you're right in the point of view is that we need a, I mean, a lot of politics, that, a lot of politicians are talking about um, of, uh, having everything open. Well, I, I think that in Orange County, it's far from being open. <laughs> definitely, you know? definitely. Um, how, how, people do not trust politicians anymore. You know, I don't trust politicians anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm a, and, and, I'm a little bit more aware, you know, I watch the major channels, news channels, but I also watch the off channels. And I have found politicians saying something in one arena and then they say something that's 10% different in another arena. Um, how would you build trust back to the people again? How would you 
get people to trust politicians again? Well, there's one word you just mentioned that is basic in your question, build trust. Um, people already know who I am. I, I have been behind curtains working with the community for a long time. I am not a politician, and I always make okay, that but very Mildred clear. Mildred Fernandez has been working in the community uh, for a long, long time, too. You know, mm -hmm. She can say, I have been working in the community for a long time. What makes you different from Mildred Fernandez, who's running against you? Yes. Okay. Or, she's run or you're running against her, or she's running against you, or well. whatever. But <laughs> you're competitors for the seat. Mm -hmm. So what makes you different? You're both Hispanic women. Mm -hmm. You both have a world of experience at the community level. You both have business experience. Her claim to fame is that she worked at IBM as a corporate executive. Yes. You're an accountant, which is a numbers person. So what is the difference be that you see between Mildred Fernandez and you that would make you a better candidate? Mildred Fernandez is a politician. I'm a public servant. Okay, what's the difference for the people that don't know? Um, I dedicate my time to serve the people of this county. My interests are not on builders. My interests are not based on people putting money in my campaigns. My interest is based in the needs of the people and, and what I'm searching for and the reason why I'm running for this seat is because I want to make a new restructuration of the government. I want to go in, clean house, and bring a government that can help build a better county. Ms. Fernandez, on the other hand, has been elected twice as commissioner, and so far what we hear and, and what people say is that they're not happy with the job she's done because like her mm -hmm. other um, contenders who are also commissioners, they all have been part together with the mayor of this disastrous government administration. Okay. Um, let's talk about money. <laughs> you are running for a major office that's traditionally <laughs> you need a lot of money to run. Mm -hmm. This is old school politics. This is the crotty political machine is now moving out and there is a vacancy, a huge vacancy there that everybody's scammering to fill. What are you going to do when it comes to raising money for television and radio? Because you know you're going to get hit by it. Oh, definitely. So how are you, do you have a mechanism in place to raise money? Um, my mechanism right now is people will come to me and they will donate according to what they want to put into my campaign. I know that right now I'm the newcomer, I'm the new kid on the block. People want to know what's my platform. Um, the first thing is uh, I have to realize as a candidate that it's common, human, standards people do not like to give money to a person who's going to lose but when i talk to people and when they listen to my platform and they hear what i have to say and where i stand uh, people call me and they say when are you going to have your fundraiser when are you going to be doing your kickoff mm -hmm. which by the way i'm going to start working on that after christmas and the reason why i'm i just signed up in october um, I said what I'm going to do in November and, and December, I'm just going to go out, talk to, in, me, in radio shows, mm -hmm. talk to the media. I have my Facebook site that's mm -hmm. running awesome. I mean, I have more than 1,000 followers already on Facebook, and I'm trying to get my signatures to qualify. And honestly, Danny, I'm not worried so much about the money. That's an old stigma. And it was proven in this last presidential campaign, and I'm not saying it's the same type of campaign, but it was proven that what people do is they vote for the one they feel it's the right candidate. And like I said before in a radio show that I was invited, you can have all the millions in the world, but if you're not going to win, you're not going to win. I know money is important, and this is going to be a tough race. And I know that um, I'm going to need to collect a lot of money. But on the same token, I know that who's going to make other people know who I am, it's my followers, the citizens, mm -hmm. everyone that shakes hands with me. I go door to door. I talk to the people at where I shop. 
at groceries. I talk well, to... Well, that's what it's going to take. Yes. What, what is your position if somebody says, you know, and I'm concentrating on you and Mildred because it's two women, two Hispanic women. Okay. 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 Fair that enough. That you're the new politician and she's been there for, like you said, she's been elected twice, twice. as commissioner. Yes. And you guys are going to split the Hispanic vote, which will almost guarantee that a non-Hispanic gets elected. I knew that was coming. <laughs> and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we need to move on. Are we you saying we need to move on and leave Mildred Fernandez behind? Well, that too. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. We need to move no, on. No, you're and not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Mildred is a, is a substantial candidate, and, and you're running against her. I, I just looked up. She has raised $30,000. Mm -hmm, you know, I just mm -hmm. looked it up on the computer. Less than the other candidates. Less than the other candidates, <laughs> but she's also an incumbent who's been in the, manipulating the system mm -hmm. for two terms as a commissioner. Now, I also know that she sought the uh, support of Crotty, and Crotty said no, that he wouldn't endorse her. Before we get to that, I want to finish answering the first ahead, question um, about dividing the Hispanic vote. Okay. Because one of the things that I'm trying to do with my platform, either winning or losing, I want to make a change in the way we look at politics. We need in, this, in Orlando, in Orange County, especially among the Hispanic community, we need to break with these stigmas from 20, 25 years ago. These are new times. If you look at the um, Orange County uh, website for the Supervisor of Elections Office, you'll see that we have four, three Anglo-Saxons running for the same position that Ms. Fernandez and I are running. You have two African-Americans running. Why can Hispanics run and have three, two, three, four candidates. No, it, it, I'm, I'm saying you can have ten. It it's, just it just reduces the likelihood of a Hispanic getting elected. I, I you know you have a following. There is no question about that because mm -hmm. I know you have a following. Okay, I know that. I also know Mildred has a following. She has her clique. Mm -hmm. You're not going to overwin her core. She's certainly not going to overwin your core. If she wasn't running, and you were the only Hispanic woman, you would pick up some of her core. True or not true? True. Okay, that's, true. that's my point. But on the other hand, you have to also look at the, at the fact that things are changing. In, in the group of followers that I have, I have African Americans who don't well, want to... Well, that would be a smart thing for you to do. That's how Gary Sipling won. <laughs> I'm not doing it on purpose. They're yeah. just, oh, yeah. They just okay. like me. They're okay. following let me. Let, let's, <laughs> let's jump the fence and go somewhere else. Then. Okay. Um, let's go to health care. Public option or no public option? Vienna Avalara stand on it? Yeah, of course. Most definitely, I believe in Obama's health care plan. So you believe that an, in the government running health care? That it's going to be possible? I doubt it. That they're going to come and do what they're saying they're going to do? If you look at the numbers and you do the math, it's... Yeah, but you're either for a public option or you're not for the public no, option. No, I'm for... The public option, you know, is the government is going to take over health care and they're going to run it. They're going to take it over and run it. Um, not the public option. I'm defining it for the people out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not defining the public option means either a nonprofit mechanism that's independent from the government would orchestrate it, or private industry would redesign its approach. Definitely, we're going to have to do it public. And the reason is even the people, the middle class, which quote unquote, mm -hmm. it's falling into poverty right now. I mean, someone was, who made 30000 or $40,000 10, 15 years ago was considered middle class, not anymore. Mm -hmm. And even if you do have health plan, you can hardly pay for your co-pays or your okay. medicine. So you're for the public option? Definitely. Okay. Let's jump to Afghanistan. Okay. Do you support <laughs> Afghanistan, the move? Obama just is sending 30,000 troops into Afghanistan. Do you support going into Afghanistan? And you are a citizen. We all are citizens. Mm -hmm. This is things that affect us all. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the war position that, that's being taken. Are you for and with Obama in sending in the 30? He already decided he was going to send in the 30. 
thousand troops. But are you supporting that as a person, as a citizen? Do you support that, or are you against? and you are for taking every, all the troops out of Afghanistan. I think it's time to bring our guys home. So you're ready to close down the war? Definitely, okay. definitely. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about the trials in New York on terrorism, okay? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Eric Holder, the district, the uh, attorney general, mm -hmm. decided, and he had the power to do that, to take these trials into New York City in civilian court. Were you for or against the trials going into civilian court. Did you want them to go into civilian court or did you want them to stay in a military court? And if so, why? Well, I'm not an attorney. However, it's no secret this is a jurisdiction matter. And um, what I find very interesting is the fact that military is very strict when it comes to their jurisdiction. And to take this into a civil court will be like a, a precedent, something that it's will never been done before. If in never, history. will make it yeah. will make history. Um, I don't think that it will change mm -hmm. in any way, shape, or form what has happened, mm -hmm. and and the burden of proof will remain the same. So it, taking it to military or taking it into civil is not going to change the fact. What it might happen if it's taken into civil, that it may cost the city of New York money, mm -hmm. and that's the scary part mm -hmm. of it. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about education. Mm -hmm. um, Massive budget cuts, teachers being laid off. There's an ups and it, it's going like a seesaw. First, they, they go to Puerto Rico to recruit bilingual teachers. They bring the teachers here, and a year and a half later, they lay off all the teachers. Um, it seems that the government can't forecast their income. I mean, if you have a tax base, Definitely. if you have a tax base, you know what that tax base is so that you can move forward. Um, what would you do right now to? Uh, change the condition of education of our children in Orange County? You hit the nail right on the head, forecasts. And when we look at forecasts, we're talking about the plan, the, the county plan, the management plan. I went and looked at the budget, and they are basing expenses based on negatives, based on a deficit. I mean, I'm not saying that... Well, how would they increase the income <laughs> if it's a negative? Well, There's one way is to lay off mm -hmm. people, so you can, what, what else can they do? Increase taxes? Try to, to not put so much money on these projects that they're intending to continue that are over millions and millions of dollars. You're talking and about the arena. Uh, the also. arena, this is, this is outrageous. I mean, the, the amount of... Do you think politicians, there's corruption there? Do you think there is corruption associated with some of these projects? For me as a candidate running for public office. I'm talking to a citizen. That's a That's tough in the know. question. That's in the know. <laughs> I'm going to take the fifth on that one. <laughs> the fifth is an answer. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So Let me put it this way. I think, and when I look... And, and this is something, not only me, any citizen, and that's what I encourage people. You don't want to vote for me. You don't have to vote for me. But do me a favor. Go to the Orange County website. Look at the budget. Look at everything that it's posted because it's supposed to be seen by the citizens. And you don't have to be a mathematician to see that these people have no clue on what they're doing. And when you say forecast... Well, that's not true. Didn't <laughs> Crowdy knows what he's doing. He's been there a long time. I mean, he made some money on the side, didn't he? Is this what you hear that well, people, I heard that he that's made, what they tell people, and people believe this. The what? People, uh, these phrases, Crotty has been there for a long time. He knows what he's doing. And, and people... The question uh, is, who's he doing it for? Thank you. <laughs> is he doing it for the citizens, or is he doing it... Because there was a big controversy with Crotty, and that's, you know, uh, with that money that he made off of something that he had a vote on, he made a hundred grand, I think? I cannot speak for him. No. I don't know what his intentions are or who he does it for. Mm -hmm. I speak facts, and the facts are we need administration in Orange County. Not only that it's responsible, but that that know what they're doing, that know where the money goes. I didn't goes. hear the word honest come out. 
and honest. And honest. And honest. Okay. And honest. Definitely. Yeah. So you do believe there's speculation, there's a possibility that there are shenanigans going on in Orange County and the money is not being spent properly. I didn't say that. No, I'm asking you. Okay. What I'm saying is that I believe that Orange County needs a new mayor, responsible, a mayor that takes this position seriously, that thinks about the people, and that when we sit there, we're going to have to completely build a whole new government. It's completely yeah. in champs. Well, um, you know, you're not going to have any excuse for, for not being able to add the numbers because you're an accountant. Definitely. <laughs> so if it turns into, Definitely. I, did, I didn't add that right. You know, they're not going to bullshit. And I know you're going to bring that up. You're going to say, Vienna, you're an accountant. What's going on? That, well, I think everybody would do that. Yes. I think and I think we should do that. Everybody's becoming very much aware mm -hmm. of political leadership, and they're getting tired of hack political leadership. They're getting tired of politicians instead of having leaders. Leaders, definitely, you know? definitely. And, and that's the reason why for me it's so important that people understand that the reason why I'm doing this, it's not just for me. It's because we as citizens need to have a change. Do you think the quality of education in Orange County schools is up to standard? Oh no, oh no, definitely our schools are in complete chaos. I have noticed a tremendous number of private schools opening up throughout Central Florida that people are willing to pay for to send their kids to. And they don't want them in public schools. And that's a shame because I know states, uh, before I live in, in Florida, I was living in Virginia, and Virginia takes so much pride in their public system. Our public school system should be our number one concern. That should be our priority. Well, when, when they you know, went to invest all of this money into these arenas that cost hundreds of millions of dollars, and there was a deficit in the school, deficit in the school system, why, why are you using that money there? The future is our children. It's not a ticket you know, being sold to watch a, a concert. I couldn't understand why they would allow a deficit in the school system and take all the money and chuck it into an auditorium so people can buy popcorn. They want to put now $50 million into it. $50 more million dollars into well, the arena. Well, I think that we, I think somebody's got to look in deep into where all that money's going. I, I suspect that there's corruption there. So I think that people should look into it very, very carefully considering this is a corporation that's out of state. Now, I don't know why the city of Orlando and Orange County went to the state of Texas and went out of state to hire a company when Florida had the capability to do that. They build all these big hotels. Why can't they build an arena and use local companies? Local companies and local um, employees. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Um, I was telling people in a radio show that I was interviewed that when you look into the county's minutes, you will see that during the past four and five years, they've been contracts that have been given to companies and to owners of um, businesses to come and do out outsourcing mm -hmm. for the county. And it's ba it, the prices are outrageous, $180,000 a year for a four-year contract. And I was saying, am I, am I missing something here? Can I better hire people to come and do this work for the county and pay them a salary and benefits? instead of doing all this outsourcing and, and giving contracts to, to companies. <laughs> well, Vienna, look, we've run out of time. <laughs> Thank you, um, Danny. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thank it's you been, so it's much for having and me here. Come back again. We'll have you back. We'll get closer to the, to the election. And okay? I will be glad to be here. This is Danny Ramos from Hispanic Speak Out TV. We will see you next week. Join us, Channel 49, every Tuesday, 9.30 p.m. Thank you.